after two months of painstakingly waiting to be able to play with our dumb virtual dollhouse, we have finally gotten confirmation that on the 30th, right after 2.7 goes live, we will finally finally have the teapot back. So what went wrong? Why did we have to wait two months for teapot maintenance to finally end? And what can we expect to find when we finally come back to the teapot after all this time? What are they gonna patch out? What are they gonna improve? What are they gonna change? This is gonna be my analysis and my uh, pretty solid speculation on what's gonna happen once the 30th rolls around. Now, before we get into it, I do wanna say, hey, if you, if you like the video, be sure to hit the video with a like and uh, perhaps even subscribe to the channel if you really like teapot content or just like Genshin in general. So for starters, for anyone who still isn't aware, right now Shanghai is going through a terrible, terrible COVID lockdown. I'm talking people are struggling just to get groceries into their homes, let alone, you know, working remotely on a AAA quality live service game, coming out content every six weeks. It's a little difficult to do when your entire state is on literal house arrest. So, for starters, I'm pretty sure that's the biggest reason why it took us an entire extra month to get 2.7 and an entire two months to get the teapot back. Now, it does suck that MiHoYo still has not really learned their lesson from the anniversary. I think they could really take a page out of the Final Fantasy XIV devs by being able to like immediately acknowledge issues that they're running into, right? Game breaking bugs, delays in creating content, and then just having full transparency on what's going on and what the roadmap is going to be for being taken care of. We are still in the dark, which sucks, but that kind of stuff, that kind of transparency and whatnot is not dictated by a majority of the developers, right? Like 98% of the staff at MiHoYo are not the ones responsible for the terrible communication. It is only the higher ups. So for the rest of the devs, I hope their time is being respected. I really hope that they're not having to deal with crunch. But that actually leads us to our next point because, okay, while obviously the COVID stuff is the biggest catalyst for why these delays have been going off, I think another big reason is Genshin itself. Genshin Impact, the content machine. Okay, I'm about to kind of armchair theorist you, so uh, get prepared. Okay, sit down, grab a drink, <laughs> grab a snacky, I don't know why. <clears throat> because I have, for the longest time now, been very concerned about the devs, and specifically like the crunch environment that MiHoYo may or may not have, because let's face it, as much as people will bemoan the actual content we end up getting, Genshin is insane. I mean, I've never seen a live service game that pumps out the amount of content that Genshin does every six weeks like clockwork. No other game, in my experience, has even come close to the amount of output that Genshin receives and, and how much varied content at that is being introduced. I mean, it feels like every update we get some new gameplay mechanic or like some new side activity that gets stacked onto the rest. And I feel like this might be another big issue on why it's taking so long for the teapot maintenance to go down. Okay, my theory is back when the teapot was originally introduced into the game, I imagine that they probably didn't have a lot of time to really implement it and get it all ironed out. It's not an easy thing to code and build up an entire like house and environment editor in just a couple months or you know however long the turnaround period for the teapot ended up being. My crackpot theory is that the teapot was probably founded on just an absolute spaghetti pile mess of code, just something stitched together, patched together, barely functional so that they could get it out the door in time for whatever update it was that that was introduced. What was that, like 1.4, 1.5, whatever it was. I think the spaghetti code is the reason why we have so many different teapot exploits to begin with, right? I think the reason why we have clipping and floating and syncing is that there just wasn't a lot of testing going on, there wasn't a lot of ironing out out to be done because the pacing of the six week content release cycle was just too much for them to really put in the quality, you know, QA to sort any of those bugs out. And hey, thank God for that because hey, clipping, floating, syncing are all amazing. They like exponentially improve the experience of the teapot. But I think we wouldn't have gotten those if creating the teapot and implementing the teapot wasn't as rushed as it was to begin with. I think as time has gone on, right, they've added more and more different furnishings and also like more furnishings that also double as different side activities with leaderboards and other mini games. And I think it's gotten to the point where it's just too much of a mess. Maybe they were testing out this new event and trying to implement the side quest into the teapot and they were running into a lot of debilitating issues that was founded because of the spaghetti code. And I think they've just gotten to a point now where 
where if they try adding or changing one thing on the teapot, it ends up screwing up and just completely breaking the rest of it, which again is something that's like very common when you have these enormous coding projects that aren't really cleaned up well. So I think this period has been them just trying to basically redo it from the ground up, really put in the work to optimize it and make it functioning how it should be functioning. Now, what are going to be the consequences of this, right? When we actually finally do get the teapot back, what else is going to be changed? Okay, I have a couple ideas. Let's go over the worst case scenario. So worst case scenario, they end up patching out clipping, floating and sinking the big three. End of the day, they are exploits, they aren't intentional, although I would like to make an argument that clipping at least is integral to the teapot. I mean, we literally have rocky landforms that were meant and like hard coded in to be clipped together. And on the teapot's official guide over on Hoyo Lab, they even detailed exactly how to clip other furnishings together by placing them on top of rocky landforms and then clipping the rocky landforms together, right? Like that is a core part of the teapot that was intended and meant to happen. So if any of the big three aren't going to be changed, I think it's clipping. I think like shake clipping fundamentally does not change how the teapot was meant to be experienced. Really, all it does is it just lets us clip stuff on the ground and not just on rocky landforms. It helps us save a little bit of load. It's a little bit convenient. Granted, it also gives us debilitating arthritis, but hey, we won't feel that for another 30 years, so that's not too bad, right? What I'm a little bit more concerned about are floating and sinking, okay? Both of those are like very clearly unintended side effects of whatever fucking mess uh, the code is. And sinking especially of the three is probably the most likely to get patched out only because while it is really cool and it gives us a lot more options with like how we can have the furnishings interact with other furnishings, it also lets us clip out of bounds. And if there is like one category of glitch and exploit that Mihoyo really does not like, it is the ability for the players to clip out of bounds, which you definitely can do. You can you can basically clip underneath the teapot by using syncing. So that is the one that I would that I would think is the most likely to get patched out. And it makes sense, right? Because the one reason that we've gotten for all this maintenance was the placement function. All three of them are exploits that deal with placing down furnishings. So that might be what's being targeted. I will say if they do end up getting patched, I'm not that concerned because I feel like no matter what, the community will always come together and we will always find a way to work around this and to always find like new ways to go about doing these exploits. At least that's my brand of hopium. And if they do patch them out, it's only going to mean the death of my best performing videos on the channel. Ooh, oh, it's cool. However, I would like to make a case that that might not be what's actually being addressed. There's a high chance that they might not touch any of the big three and instead it might just be a load limit thing, okay? What is literally the number one biggest complaint that we have had about the teapot since it first came out like over a year ago? It's been the load limit, okay? It's been very scant. We've barely had anything to work with. I know I personally, in every single survey that I do, put in a little request for them to tweak the load limit and increase how much we can put down and there's a chance that that is just what's being addressed. Now, ideally, they're just expanding the load limit, and that's it. We just get to put a lot more stuff down. We get to have bigger, more intricate, and more dense builds, and that's that. That would be the perfect universe, but there's also a chance that they might implement some of the quality of life features we had from that custom domain builder event from a couple months ago. Specifically, that event had a load limit visualizer. It was such a godsend. It was something we desperately needed for the teapot, and I'm hoping that maybe it's going to find its way over here soon. It also had a actual numeric value that also like lets you just track how much each object individually took up and then how much your overall load limit was to work with. Please God, just I'm begging you. It has been a long time coming for us to actually be able to track how much load we have and not play a goddamn game of red light, green light. In an absolute perfect world, what I'd really, really love to see happen. I would like for them to take the big three. Instead of every time we want to float a house three feet off the ground, we have to go through SpongeBob's 17 bubble blowing step. Instead of having to do that, I would like for them to implement the big three as actual gameplay features. If you want to shake clip an object on the ground, instead of having to get big arthritis, why not just forgo the hitboxes in general and just let us snap furnishings together or not and just let them be placed wherever we want them to be placed. If they could also put in a toggle for us to just be able to freely place things on the vertical axis without us having to go through the you know multi-step process of floating, that would be awesome. Okay, again, the custom domain uh, builder showed us how easy it could be when we can just freely edit stuff on the Y axis. So hopefully that's getting implemented too. And hopefully the load limit itself is getting optimized. Hopefully we are either being able to place 
more stuff down, or at the very least, we're getting a UI update so we can actually see how much we have left to work with, which can at least help a little bit with us planning stuff out and not feeling so blindsided when the load limit does encroach on us. So I know it'd also be pretty nice if like things like companions or interactable objects, uh, mini games, right? If the load that those categories of objects took up was just like a lot less, that would be great too. Maybe that's what's being tweaked because again, the event has to deal with us taking our companions and putting them into the teapot. So maybe this all stemmed from this trying to, to optimize the amount of load that companions took up and then that stemmed to them trying to optimize the rest of the load that like other objects were taking up. I don't know. Again, it sucks that we're left in the dark. It sucks that there's really not any transparency, but I think that's a pretty solid foundation to speculate on and to expect things to play out when we do finally get the teapot. So what are your thoughts? Do you have any other ideas about what might be tweaked? What you think the end result is going to be? When you think the teapot is going to come back? Uh, let me know. Uh, but anyway, hey, thanks a ton for watching. And I'll see you for whatever the results of this big man ends may or may not be. Godspeed, soldiers. S stay safe out there.